friends. So I'm doing kind of a different sort of video today. I wanted to do sort of an unboxing, although it's not a true unboxing because I did have to take this out of its box to charge it before I started. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's do a little something for dramatization purposes, shall we? Oh wow, look at this box. I'm going to open it. Hey, look what's inside in exactly the same form it usually comes in. And when I lift this, I have instructions, some more stuff, and some paper. Groovy. See, you didn't miss anything really. So, the reason I'm doing this video today is because I have always used my Polaroid Zip printer. And in case you're unfamiliar, this is a printer that connects to your phone and you can use it to print two by three stickers. So the way that I've always used this is I print photos to put into my planner because each two by three sheet, when you cut it in half, gives you two perfect full box sized squares so you can put them into your Erin Condren planner. As a matter of fact, this is an Erin Condren branded Polaroid Zip. I bought it through her site many, many, many years ago. But I was inspired to get a Canon Ivy because A, I've always been a very big fan of Canon, and B, I'm having a harder and harder time finding the Polaroid paper. So I don't know if they're starting to phase it out. I could not find one of these for sale at the time of recording this. Maybe it's old technology. Like I said, I've had this one for years and maybe we're just moving towards this. I did notice though that the paper that the Canon uses is also zinc paper, just like the Polaroid one. So I don't know, again, is it just that they're phasing out the Polaroid zips altogether and that's why the paper is harder to find, whatever. Same stuff though, as evidenced. So what I was hoping to do in this video is give you guys a direct comparison. This is actually the very first time I've ever used this. I only opened it this morning so that I could charge it for this video, but I still haven't loaded it with paper. I downloaded the app for my phone, but I still haven't even like set up the Bluetooth or anything. So we're gonna be going through all of this together. See, so right now it's telling me choose your device. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. There it goes. And here's the Canon 4D 5D mini printer. Don't know why it's called 4D or 5D, but there it goes, new firmware required. Okay, well, we'll just skip through this whole situation. Okay, so I have the Polaroid Zip connecting now. See, so it says Polaroid Zip, yes, allow. It's gonna automatically open up that for me. And I'm gonna open up a photo. And I feel like the easiest way to test this is to use the same photo for both printers. So I just have a picture of myself here that I'm going to use, or that I have used, I guess, for a Lush collection video that if you guys wanna see that, I'll post that up here. But here's the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell the Polaroid Zip to print one copy for me. I just loaded this with new paper yesterday. So I'm not gonna get to show you guys how I do that, but I'm willing to bet that the process is very, very similar for the Canon Ivy, considering that they use the same paper. So now I'll load that one and show you guys how that's done when we do the test. All right, so there's my photo. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right there for now. Let's go ahead and open the Canon. Let's take our printer test picture. There I am. I'm just gonna tell it to print. No paper, that's right, there is no paper. I did just mention that, didn't I? So we're gonna open it just like this. It's the exact same mechanics, really, as the Polaroid Zip. So that's good for me because I'm already used to the Polaroid Zip. So it's gonna come like this. Here's all your paper and then this blue sheet. You wanna put it facing down because that's what's gonna help the printer calibrate its colors. Wait, it's like this, isn't it? You do one of these and I don't know why it's not automatically doing it. This one always has done that automatically of like, oh, let me go ahead and calibrate and shoot that blue paper out. I'm gonna put this away because we don't need it, but maybe when I tell it to print, it'll go through all that. So yes, go ahead and print. 
Did I do it? Are you happening? Okay, it says that it's not connected now, so let me, oh, I didn't close this right first off. So that might be why that didn't happen, but also it's turned itself off. So I'm going to reconnect it. It's giving me the select an accessory pop-up again. Here we are. I'm gonna click my picture again. Print, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it again and tell it to print. Okay, there it goes. So it's sending it to the printer. Let's see how long it takes now to get to the printer and get the printer to start its process. For some reason, it's just like stuck at 0%, so uh, we're still waiting. This is the very first time I use this. So some of it might be user error, some of it might be this thing is still acclimating to like being a functioning member of society, but um, I'm completely unfamiliar with both the machine and the software, so there is a possibility that I'm doing something wrong I just don't know what I'm supposed to do besides tell it to print. And it did do the countdown to 100%. It got to 100%. I'm assuming that that was taking this from here to here. But now it's at 0% because it's 0% printed. I mean, I can see that. But what is it going to take now to get it moving? Okay, so I had a stopwatch going. It took 40 seconds from the time I stopped recording in order for this to start moving. Um, it's making horrible grindy sounds that have me a little bit concerned but here comes the paper for the calibration and what I'm actually most curious about is the print quality because the Polaroid zip it didn't really seem to do it very much for this particular print but it does sometimes kind of throw a little bit more to the blue side so I wonder how the colors are going to look on the Canon Ivy and that's why I wanted to do the exact same picture, so we could have an apples to apples comparison. The sounds coming out of this are a little terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. Not to say that this is quiet, but it certainly doesn't sound as aggressive as this. So it prints facing the other way, which is interesting. Right, so the violent noises have ceased. Let's go ahead and do a comparison here. So the top one is the Zip, bottom one is the Canon Ivy, and they look sort of similar to me. No, actually they don't at all. I feel like, well, the light's not helping you guys, but in person, I can really tell the difference here. I feel like the tones of my skin are more true to life on the Canon, and the picture is not quite as pixelated. Like it feels like it's an overall better quality on the Ivy uh, compared to the zip. On the zip, I see more lines. On the paper, um, I look more washed out and more yellow, I guess, than pink. But um, yeah, I mean, again, I know that with the light, it doesn't give you guys Actually, that's a pretty good angle there. Um, so you guys can really tell the differences between the two as far as, maybe not so much as far as the quality, but certainly in terms of the color. I feel like the Canon Ivy does a much better job at printing true to color than the Polaroid Zip did, in this case anyway. So I wanna do this one more time, just to be absolutely certain. Again, this is the same phone and obviously it's the same photos. So I feel like we're getting a pretty good apples to apples comparison. I hate that I keep saying that, but I can't think of a better way to say it for you guys. But I do want to give it one more test or one more opportunity for a test. So let's go back in here and go back to our printer test folder. So we've got our printers. I'm going to go ahead and try to print this photo here. I'm trying to stick to faces because I feel like, first off, that's typically what I end up printing, but also because it's gonna give me a good range of colors. We're gonna get to see how it does with skin tones compared to backgrounds, etc.
So I find it funny that once again, it's printed in the exact opposite orientation as the zip. But again, I think it's pretty undeniable that the faces on the zip are kind of washed out. Um, they don't have as true to life of a coloring and the texture of the skin is a little off. Overall, the print looks more pixelated. So I think it's a pretty obvious difference in terms of quality of print and in terms of quality of color calibration for sure. Maybe it's because it's brand new, maybe it's because it's a Canon, I don't know. But I am pretty glad for the upgrade now that I've seen the comparison. So was this the most scientific test ever? Not quite, but I hope that that showed you guys a little bit about why I'm upgrading, about how each of them work. This is definitely not a bad machine. It served me very well for very, very many years. I feel like either one of them would be a good purchase if you're trying to make photo stickers for your planner, for your bullet journal, etc. So there you go, friends. That's going to conclude my not very scientific comparison of the two machines. I would love to know if you've used either of them, what your experiences have been. If you've happened to have used both, I'd love to know how you feel about them, comparing them one to the other, if you found the same that I found regarding the quality and the colors. Or if you use a different printer altogether, like the HP Sprocket or maybe some other kind that I've never heard of, I'd love to hear about that as well. Let me know your experiences in the comments. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope it was helpful. If you did like it, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.